everyone, Jared here, and today we're gonna to talk about a groove from the song 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover by Paul Simon, and this was played and recorded by the great Steve Gadd. This is really, really fun groove to learn. It utilizes tons of different um, cool stuff that you've probably never tried before, um, as well as it gives you insight into just developing the certain feel that he has because it's just you know above and beyond the majority of drummers out there. And I think you can agree with me. Now, I did a cover to this song just to kind of show you I do know how to play it. I'm not even close to the way, to where Steve Gadd does it, but I at least tried and I gave it my best, and that's what's most important. So basically what I've got for you is I've got um, just some sheet music with the groove written out. Now, there is a video of Steve Gadd on YouTube of him kind of demonstrating and showing you this groove, but I think it'd be really, really cool to um, show you how it looks with our smart beat technology. And so that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna demonstrate it, talk about the different things in there, and then we're gonna put the sheet music on screen with the bouncy ball, and hopefully it'll start to connect for you guys, and you'll be able to see how this groove actually comes together. Okay, so taking a look at the sheet music, um, you'll look at just count one on the beginning of both bars, okay? It's a two bar groove, and I'm talking about just the verse groove or the intro groove. And one thing you're gonna notice here is the hi-hat opens on count one, and then the A of one, okay? And then my left hand hits the hi-hat on the E of one, and then the snare, and my right hand hits the snare on the and of one. So the first beat goes like this. And so that's essentially the hardest part of learning this groove. We're not used to opening the hi-hat with our foot and using that with one of the strokes. At least I wasn't. So it's really important that you just practice that when you're first starting out. And then just slowly start to add to it. Okay, so look at count two. Count two, we have hi-hat with the left hand on the count two, and then the and of two, the snare on the E of two, okay, and then the bass drum on the A of two. So that would sound like this. And then putting those two counts together would sound like this. Okay, so it's kind of funky as it all comes together, but it sounds so good with the track. Um, and then on count three, it's fairly simple. We hit our right hand on the floor tom with the bass drum. Okay, and then count four, again, it's relatively simple. It's two 30 second notes, and then three sixteenth notes. So it kind of goes da 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 like this. So bar one would sound like this. It's hard to play slow, so hopefully that made sense there. Now the next bar, okay, the first two counts are exactly the same. Count three, we just hit the bass drum, and then on count four, this is where it really changes, I hit both toms, and then a group of four 30 second notes, starting on the end of four, that sound like this. So I will mention that there are variances of what Steve Gadd actually does when you listen to the track. So sometimes he'll hit the toms and then not do a roll in the snare. Okay, sometimes he'll leave certain things out. Like when he was demonstrating the groove on the YouTube video, he left out some of the hi-hat strokes sometimes. And no one can say it's wrong because he wrote it, he can do whatever he wants, and it always sounds good. Okay, so let's put it all together. And I'm gonna do this with smart beat technology. We're gonna do it at 80 beats per minute, and then I'm gonna do it again at the actual tempo of the song, which I believe is 102 beats per minute. So here we go at 80.
right, so that's essentially the groove from 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, Paul Simon, and the drummer on there was Steve Gadd. Now there's two quick things I wanna to touch on. The first is, I'm not playing with the same feel as he is. I wish I could, I wish it came naturally to me, but it doesn't. I'm gonna continue practicing and try and get better and better at that. The second thing is, um, he plays with traditional grip. I don't play a traditional grip. So if you go watch the video of him, which you should, go watch the video of him um, demonstrating it, you'll see he, he plays traditional grip and it, his drums are tuned a little bit differently. It sounds a little different, which is great. I couldn't do that here today. I play DW, he plays Yamaha, which is all good. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It's been really, really fun kind of dissecting this song. And this is something I was working on. So I never really planned to show it to you guys, but I figured since I'm working on it, I might as well show it to you as well. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.